So here's a latest little goof off uh, project, I guess, a uh, long weekend project, I, I guess you might call it. And what this is, is a little practice amplifier that has all the components of a real amplifier. Um, and it's got uh, two 12 AX7s, um, basically going, uh, this one, uh, there's three separate gain stages that feed a cathodine phase inverter which then uh, powers uh, a pair of pentodes. Uh, these are 6PX6 or EF80s and um, full-on uh, push-pull Class AB um, operation. And it's got a regular old little power transformer here and a traditional uh, output transformer. Um, and uh, pretty simple controls. Uh, basically fed off, uh, you know, house 110. And uh, because these put out a whopping 1.4 watts, um, <laughs> I could actually have a, a speaker off switch here. So if I wanted uh, to use headphones, which I'll show you on the front, uh, I can just um, uh, run the output transformer and power tube power, uh, excuse me, into um, a little uh, power soak resistor, which I have on the inside. And I'll just flip this guy over here so we can look at the guts. Uh, so here are the guts of the amp. Um, and power transformer basically um, coming in, uh, I have a little um, uh, T-MOV, um, which uh, just protect me against um, over voltages or over currents, you know, spikes. Um, and I also have a little uh, negative uh, temperature coefficient thermistor here for kind of soft start for the filaments on the tubes. And I'm running this uh, into a little solid state uh, rectif rectifier, and it's nothing fancy. There's no backup diodes uh, or anything here, um, but that basically takes my uh, uh, voltage that would be going to the plates of the rectifier and then rectifies it um, in uh, I guess uh, dual half wave um, fashion uh, and then to get the voltages down uh, to where I wanted them to be for uh, my design I just have a couple of zeners and a little mini string here and then I've got another zener to bring my preamp voltages down um, so pretty simple design here and then I've got um, this stuff here uh, because this is using 12 AX7s and it's really small space, I kind of thought maybe I might need some uh, noise reduction on the filament supply. So I figured I'd use uh, some extra spaces here on my little uh, turret uh, board um, to make a little DC uh, lift for my filament voltage supply. And that's what all this stuff is here. Um, this stuff here is my tone stack, uh, and then I also have some uh, components for uh, my phase inverter on this board. Everything else um, had plenty of room, so uh, I just did point-to-point -point here. Um, and well, I guess I wouldn't say I had plenty of room, but there it wasn't super-duper crowded. And then on the inside here, uh, we got a, a tone pot. Uh, and this is a push-pull, and what this does is give me additional gain. Uh, these two resistors um, are up here be so that they're <laughs> easy to change uh, as I want to tweak the gain. Um, uh, once I get the amp fully situated in the little cabinet that I'm going to build with a little uh, six-inch speaker. A little volume here uh, control. This is um, the control for my line out or headphones. This is the guitar in. Uh, I did find uh, when I was doing the build and testing it that because everything's so physically close together um, uh, and it was impossible to do really good lead dress like I would if I had more room, um, turns out I just um, it, it was necessary to put in shielded wire for uh, feeding the grids on these 12 AX7s. Um, because I was getting into some oscillation issues when I was testing it and that was the easy fix. Um, so that's the guts of the amp and the front side control wise this is 
this is how it's going to be mounted, I guess, on the little tabletop uh, cabinet that I'm going to make. Um, one mistake I did make when I was laying it out was I put the, I don't know why the heck I did this. I stuck the um, little power indicator uh, light here, which was idiotic. I should have put it here next to the switch um, because it made it complicated for me uh, on the inside. But it's what, when you're just laying stuff out just <laughs> by the seat of your pants at, at one in the morning. Um, but anyway, that's this little guy. The whole chassis, this is just a little Hammond project box. Uh, this is seven inches uh, wide by five inches deep, and I think it's two inches uh, tall. So actually plenty of room to do uh, the build. Here's a little fella all plugged in. Um, and as you can see, there's not a whole lot of real estate here I had to work with. So I decided to just have really simple inputs, uh, basically a volume and a tone. And then I had um, line, or excuse me, a headphone level out uh, volume here and input uh, for the guitar and then outputs for your headphones. And again, stupidly, I should have put this little indicator light here, but oh well. Um, that's why this is kind of cockamamie. Um, but design-wise, I had, uh, obviously, when you're designing an amp, you can decide it any way you want around anything. Um, and I ended up picking uh, the design for 12AX7s because they're kind of ubiquitous. They probably are not my favorite preamp tubes, but I had a bunch of current production stuff lying around that I never use, so I figured, well, I'll just put them in here because I'm not going to put my really good tubes in <laughs> a little practice amp. Um, so there's uh, two 12AX7s and I looked at a whole mess of different uh, pentodes looking for something that would put out you know no more than about a watt and a half maximum two watts and I have a bunch of different octals that I could have used um, but they were going to be an even tighter fit here and I figured well I had a couple of these little tubes called 6BX6s or EF80s. And they actually turned out um, on paper to look pretty good. Um, and I know that a bunch of other folks have made little micro amps um, using these. So I figured, yeah, shoot, I'll just design around those. Um, and, you know, I don't think these are currently being made, but uh, you can get these like for 10 bucks. Um, so they seem to be pretty ubiquitous, um, pretty cheap. I mean, they're a lot cheaper than even current production 12AX7s, which is ridiculous. Um, and I didn't have room inside to put my reservoir and filter caps, uh, and I didn't have enough room to make a doghouse. And I did have this cap, I don't know what I got it for, uh, lying around, so I figured I might as well design around that because I had it. Um, so the mounting scheme for my uh, cap is, is pretty lame, I guess, um, but certainly not elegant, but it's, it's pretty solid here. And then I mounted the high voltage uh, sides of it. Um, so you can't quite fit a finger in there. I guess you could if you really tried uh, to shock yourself, but uh, best thing I could do uh, is I was kind of laying this thing out. Um, so design-wise, um, uh, simple volume. The tone stack is uh, from Merlin Blenco. It's called a tilt tone stack, and I really like it a lot um, because it's super simple um, and it's pretty varied in terms of what you can get out of it. If you add, for example, a bright uh, bypass to it, you can do anything with it. Um, but even the stock, uh, or even the the stock configuration, if you look at changing the different values and you model those out, I mean, shoot, you can do anything from a full-on uh, blackface mid-scoop stuff um, in a bigger amp where you get a lot of that percussiveness and that classic blackface tone um, to kind of tweedy to brown face. Um, you can go dead flat if you want to, going all the way up to accentuated highs. You can do country twang, all sorts of stuff. Uh, just with component changes. So, and the other cool thing about the tilt tone stack is it's a high impedance tone stack, which is kind of nice if you're pushing it 
with um, something that has a high plate resistance like um, a 12AX7. So uh, it impedance matches much better than like the Fender Marshall Box tone stack. Um, and it's not very complicated. Um, I guess kind of like this uh, for a single knob. Um, and so anyway, uh, this is headphone out. Uh, the headphone uh, comes off of the cathode of, of the stage that's pushing my phase inverter. And this was, I guess, uh, kind of an angle uh, design, uh, which I tweaked a little bit. Um, and Spice model it out to about 3.2 volts RMS uh, max. And, you know, and I measured it on the oscilloscope. Um, it, you know, my max output was like 19 volts peak to peak, which is amazingly close to, to what Spice predicted. Um, so quickie demo of the amp. Um, with all my shortcomings as a guitar player, but um, I figured if I'm at noon, uh, I want to design the amp so that I would have predominantly cleans even with the volume of the guitar uh, dimed out, and I think it does that pretty well. <laughs> And then when I went, I wanted it so that I'm going past noon, I'm still not going over 1.4 watts, even dimed out. I'm, you know, I think the sketches out or, or spices out uh, like 1.35 watts. But as I go up here uh, in volume, I wanted to be able to get some crunch at the maximum uh, tone volume of, uh, or volume knob on the guitar and then be able to ride the volume on the guitar to get clean um, to crunch, just like you would with a real amp if you were playing. Alive, so uh, and I think this does that pretty well. And then the way this uh, tone knob works is it kind of you know it tilts, so we get as we go more trebly, we pick up more treble uh, and we drop off more bass, uh, which is kind of nice. So you can get kind of punchier, clean stuff. Or we can roll this off and kind of get that um, warmer. And then dimed out here, uh, I wanted gain so that even if you rolled off your toe knob, you'd still be really crunchy. get a little extra gain, um, extra distortion, kind of the max of this design. Again, it's not a designed to be a, a high gain amp by any means, but certainly want to be able to, to practice stuff. So um, by pulling my tone knob out, I can get the max gain, um, which basically just changes the voltage divider, uh, which I set up uh, for the reference, uh, grid reference uh, on one of the stages. Um, but it gets it gets decent gain. <laughs>
So pretty stoked. Um, kind of sounds like a real amp, just not very loud. <laughs>